Welcome everyone. My name is Jessica Boda and I am the project manager on the Unified Terminology Governance Project or UTG. This webinar will discuss the HL7 terminology and some changes introduced to it by the UTG project. During this webinar, we'll look at the HL7 terminology website at terminology.hl7.org. We'll review the web page layout, including how to locate the latest published version of all content or the current version of content, also called the latest in development. We'll look at where to find documentation and the terminology artifacts and where to find the content downloads. We'll then take a look at how the published terminology artifacts are represented and how to navigate to each type, as well as the useful groupings of artifacts. Lastly, I'll briefly introduce the new unified terminology governance process for terminology maintenance at HL7. HL7 terminology artifacts are accessible through the new HL7 terminology webpage at terminology.hl7.org. There was previously no simple way to browse the full set of terminology artifacts published by HL7. For those of you familiar with FHIR, the HL7 terminology pages should look and feel very similar, since the pages are built using the same tooling that's used to build the FHIR implementation guide. These pages are freely accessible to anyone with an internet connection or web and web browser. It's important to pay attention to the version of HL7 terminology being displayed on the pages. Terminology.hl7.org will always point to the most recent published version of the terminology, and the version is displayed across the top of every page. Across the top of the page, you'll also see a link for the directory of published versions. Clicking this link will allow you to see all previously published versions of the terminology, as well as the current version, which is continuously updated as changes are approved. You can view other versions by clicking on the links to the left of the version in the date column. For example, to see the current version of all content, click on the current tab. This directs you to the set of pages to the version that you clicked on. In this case, we were directed to the current version, which we can verify at the top of the page. So we can see we're no longer on the published 1.0.0 version of content, but that we are now looking at version 1.0.14. The HL7 terminology pages include documentation throughout the tabs and subtabs that provide useful information in the context of each page. The home page introduces the unified terminology governance process for vocabulary maintenance at HL7. It also describes the content layout of the site and the unified terminology governance versioning approach. There's also a background tab that describes the architecture of HL7 content as published on these pages and each type of artifact that's browsable on these pages. There's also verbiage throughout the different artifact type tabs, as well as the grouping subtabs that provide information in context. The documentation is always evolving as part of the UTG update process. When downloading content, it's extra important to pay attention to the version of the terminology pages that you are on. Once you have verified that the version is correct, click on the Downloads tab. You'll be redirected to the downloads page, which provides terminology download packages in several formats. The full content download contains a zip file of the HL7 terminology pages as they appear here. You can then host these terminology pages on your own network. There are also NPM packages available, and for more information on these packages, please see the FHIR documentation on NPM packages. For those using toolings that do not require NPM packages, you can download the artifact definitions, examples, and expansions in JSON, XML, and Turtle formats. The HL7 version 3 core MIF file is also available, and our hope is that other HL7 product family specific release formats will be made available for download in the future. The HL7 terminology is now represented as fire code system and value set resources. There are extensions in place to support the differences in design for the other HL7 product family artifacts. The design of value sets conforms to the characteristics of a formal value set definition normative standard. 
Naming systems are also provided as machine processable references for current and former identifiers for code systems or identifier systems. While there is a tab for concept maps, they're currently not published here. Concept maps are statements of relationships from one set of code system concepts to one or more other code system concepts. It's likely that they'll be supported once concept maps are normative in FHIR. The terminology artifacts are grouped by artifact type in the main gray tabs. They're separated into code systems, value sets, concept maps, and naming systems. Additionally, there's a number of useful groupings based on the artifact type. The groupings take into consideration the groups of artifacts that people tend to work mostly with based on how things have been published together for many years. The artifacts are grouped mainly for convenience, and artifacts can be in multiple subtabs. You simply click on an artifact link to go to the rendered page for that vocabulary artifact. On the right is an example of a code system on the HL7 terminology pages. For each artifact, there's three main portions of the page when viewing any code system or value set. The first is the summary or the metadata. The second section is the content, which includes properties and codes for code systems and logical definitions and expansions for value sets. And the third section is the history. In addition to metadata information like URL, version, name, OID, and others, the summary section provides links to source files for the artifact in XML, JSON, and Turtle formats. This may be useful for people wishing to download a copy of a single artifact without having to download the entire package of content. The summary section also includes links to other artifacts referenced by the selected artifact. For code systems, the references section will link to the referenced value sets that are cited on this set of pages. For value sets, the section will list code systems that the value set includes contents from. You can navigate to the reference content by clicking the link. You can then browse the referenced value set. The metadata is displayed similarly to code systems. You may notice that the value set references say it is not used here. That means it is not bound to data elements in the local implementation guide because for UTG, there are no data element definitions, only terminology. So right now we have boilerplate text that we're looking into modifying or removing from these pages. The second section of a code system includes the properties used by the code system and the codes themselves. There are a lot of properties that are used throughout the artifacts, but most code systems use just a small subset of these properties. The codes are all displayed in the table below the properties, and there's a column for each property used in the code system. The level column indicates the depth of the codes if a hierarchy exists in the code system. All code system codes have display and definition values. The two properties are displayed in the last two columns, and I just wanna note that there is a bug with the IG that does not display extensions like specializes and generalizes, and that's being worked on. For value sets, the contents include the logical definition and the expansion. The expansion is generated by the creation of these pages, so they're regenerated each time the pages are updated. The last section of a rendered artifact is the history tracking information. History tracking entries are added each time an artifact is updated using the unified terminology governance process. This can be useful for tracking changes to an artifact over time. We're looking into mining older history from the former publication process, and that might be added in the future as well. So that covers the three main sections when viewing code systems and value sets on the terminology web pages, as well as how to navigate the terminology site. I want to provide a brief introduction to the unified terminology governance process, as it gives some insight into how these terminology pages are updated when vocabulary changes are needed. The transition to the UTG solution for vocabulary maintenance at HL7 from the previous harmonization approach introduces several beneficial changes. First and foremost, all published HL7 terminology artifacts are now accessible and browsable in one place. There's no need for bulky downloads or installing tooling to browse the content. 
Vocabulary maintenance is also a continuous process. Harmonization used to occur three times per year, which led to delays in implementing vocabulary changes. With the rapid development of implementation guides, it's really important to be able to push changes through more quickly to support the implementer community. And with this process, changes can be pushed through on demand. The UTG vocabulary maintenance process relies on a JIRA-based ticketing system that supports the workflow needed to implement vocabulary changes. Previous requests were created using Word documents, GForge tickets, and emails, so there never was any transparency or central repository to see all proposals. The UTG process uses platform-independent tooling so that the vocabulary change submitter can create the terminology changes. Changes were previously done using rich text editors, which often led to typos and errors in the content. The vocabulary change proposals go through a consensus-based workflow where reviewers can vote on the approval of changes. Once requested changes are approved, changes are managed using Git and Subversion. Through this process, all artifacts are versioned and change managed independently. These improvements provide a more responsive and transparent method for vocabulary maintenance that we believe will benefit the community. If you're interested in learning more about UCG, we will have additional webinars for more targeted audiences. The Terminology Governance and Publishing at HL7 webinar will cover the vocabulary maintenance process and using the UTG JIRA site to access vocabulary issues, review change proposals in process, and report vocabulary issues and content needs. The following session will focus on reviewing and voting on proposed vocabulary changes in the queue. And the last section will focus on the technical details on submitting vocabulary change proposals. That concludes this webinar, and I hope it sheds some light on the new HL7 terminology web pages, and I encourage you all to browse them at your convenience. Thank you.